This video lecture will discuss how to use Microsoft Word styles. Styles are one of the features of Microsoft Word that people don't know a whole lot about. At least most people don't. People who use Word proficiently, they're experts in styles, they use them all the time, they can make documents dance. You need to learn how to use them in order to be more than just a hunt and peck uh, amateur who doesn't really know how to use the word processing software to its full potential. Remember, Microsoft Word is not, not, not a typewriter. You can do better. Here's how to use the styles. The first thing we're going to do is look at the Microsoft Word uh, page layout and figure out what's going on. When you usually change fonts and uh, sizes on your own documents, this is the way you've probably done it in the past. You say highlight, pick something, I want it to be Cambria. Then, oh, I want it to be bigger. I want this to be also Cambria. I want it to be bigger. Click, click, click. It gets real old real fast. Let's get rid of that. Move it back to what it was. I was hitting Control Z to undo, by the way. Notice when I click around here, click, 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 the entire document is Times New Roman. Nothing's different. Also, this little thing up here that's highlighted says normal, that's not changing anywhere I click to. That's because it is the style that is applied to all the document. What I'm talking about in terms of styles is I like to think of them as um, the Harry Potter magic wand. You're in transfiguration class. You wave your wand, you whack something, and it changes from a rat into a teacup. In this particular case, you're going to make it the text, it meaning the text, you're going to make it change appearances and change its behaviors. It'll do different things. So let's figure out how we can do this all at once. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change everything that is normal. So I'm going to click on something and say, all right, that word there, I want it to be Calibri. Notice what we've got going on over here. It popped up a little window, said Latin plus body Calibri. I got to this window, in case you don't have it open already, by pressing this little box with a down arrow in the corner of the styles ribbon, or I can also use a keyboard combination, Control alt shift s and it opens. What I'm going to do is then, I'm going to change everything here to match this particular word. How do I do that? I hover either over normal or normal, right click, say update normal to match selection, boom, notice the entire document changed all at once. What's going on here is that the normal tag is applied to all the text in the document. So, and once I change it, the entire thing changes. Let's learn some other ways that we can mess with our normal style. Let's change the, the we've already changed the font, let's change the point size. In addition to doing things through the drop downs and then right clicking and saying change, what I can do is I can change it through here. Now notice I'm hovering over the normal, and I've got a little box that popped up. It's telling me that my font, my default font for everything in the document is going to be Calibri 12 point. I can click on the drop down there, or else I can just let, right click on it, go to modify. Got a nice drop down window here that I'll mess with. Notice what these are? Yeah, you've probably seen these before. I can pick fonts, sizes, bold italic underline, I can change colors if I want to, all sorts of things. I can also get to this menu and a few more by clicking the format button and then going to font. I can select all sorts of really cool stuff. So for example, and instead of doing it here, I'm just going to do it here. So Calibri, I want it to be. Um, let's make, uh, actually I kind of like that, I'm just going to leave that be, I'm going to make the entire body Calibri, and it's okay, and that's the way we have it. Let's also show you some ways that we can change other things as well. When we look at this, all the paragraphs are just rammed together, for example, that paragraph, that paragraph, 
that paragraph. Didn't mean to do that. All those, you can barely see that they're even anything different. So what do we want to do? We're going to modify our normal to insert some space between the paragraphs. Right click on normal, say modify, format, and we're going to go to paragraph. We're going to use the spacing before and after. This is our paragraph spacing. So we're going to change this. I'm not going to mess with the before, but I'm going to mess with the after. Now notice, each time I click this, it's going to add six points of space. So if I say six, OK, watch what happens on the this side of the screen. Hmm, space in there. Format paragraph, let's make it 12. More space. Format paragraph 18. Even more space. You can also type whatever number you want in there. I'm going to use 9 just because I can. There it goes. So now notice we've got space between the paragraphs and I cannot put my, par my cursor between any of those paragraphs. Let's look at, at changing your leading as well. Let me go to Normal, Modify, Format, Paragraph. In this particular case, leading is changed by a thing called line spacing. It's Microsoft Word's way of making things uh, understandable for people who don't know what the word leading means. The default is going to be single, or often it's built in as multiple 1.15. What you want to do is, because you know about document design, you can go to exactly and then pick the size that works for you. Now notice, it's exactly set at 12. What I want to do is I want to use the rule of thumb that says, anytime I have a font, I'm going to change my letting to 120% of that, of that font size. So for example, for 12 points, what is 120% of 12? Easy. Multiply it by 1.2. You come up with 14.4. Watch what happens to the text on the left side of the screen. Ah, it changed a little bit. It brought itself closer together. I'm going to say OK. Now I'm going to undo that and then redo it. Undo, redo, undo, redo. Which is easier to read? I'm going to blow this up a little bit and take it out there. Actually, Take away, there we go. Undo, redo, undo, redo. Which of those is easier to read looks more professional? I would argue that the one with 14.4 looks better than the one with just plain single spacing. Use uh, the rule of thumb as 120%. Depending on some other factors, you can go up or down, but use that as a base number to go with. From that point onward, let's talk about how to apply some other styles. We've got a title. We can come up here to title, click on it. Ah, but notice what's happening. It's cut off. That's because if we hover over this, we take a look down at the bottom, it says based on normal. This is you normal is your parent style. Sort of like you look like your parents and your children will look like you traits are handed down through generations of styles. So normal is your base, everything flows downhill from it. If you change normal, everything else that's based on normal will also change. That's why if you're working on a very, very large document, it's a good idea to leave your normal as basic and simple as possible and then build off of it. Create, for example, default paragraph style or main body style, something like that that you can apply to all your paragraphs of your main body and then you can adjust that and if you have to adjust normal for any reason, you will not wreck everything else that you've already built. But anyway, let's talk about how to mess with this. I'm going to modify, format, paragraph, and we're just going to set it to single spacing. And there it goes. We'll say OK there. We're looking through this. We've also got some headings. We've got heading 1, heading 2, heading 3. We can come up here to our quick styles and just blast them in as we like. Heading 1, is it up here? Nope, it's not there. 
Well, what are we supposed to do then? It's not over here either. This is where some of your uh, options, uh, word, options, come into play. It says, select styles to show in use. Right now, we've only got these particular fonts being used. So I'm going to go to in current document. In current document shows you the ones that are built into the, do the document template that you opened. Hmm, well, let's look at some more. How about recommended? What does Microsoft Word think that would be helpful to me? Uh, it's got some more, but it still doesn't have heading two or three. I can show next heading when previous level is used. That will insert it. So if I've got heading two, go to there. But what if I hadn't done that? What if I just had the two? I can also go to all styles. All styles shows me a master list of every single style that is used in Microsoft Word. They're all built in. Check out that list. That's pretty impressive, isn't it? You can probably find something there that you can use. If not, you can always build your own. I'm going to show you how to do that next. In any case, heading three, heading three, rolling, heading three, heading three, heading two, heading two. Notice I just click, click, click. Work cited is always going to be heading one. And there we have it. We formatted our entire document. Now let's talk about some things that we still have to format. Our works cited list. I'm going to put some paragraph breaks in here just because I can. And we're going to use these things as different entries in a works cited list. So what are we going to do? Looking through here, do we have a bibliography entry? Well, we do. Let's see what this does. Click there, bibliography. Hmm. It didn't do a whole lot. Tell you what, we can either modify it or I'm going to use this as an example to build your own style and I could do exactly what you want. I'm going to come down here to the little double A with the sunburst. It says new style as I hover over it. I'm clicking on it. I'm going to give it a name. When you give a name to your style, give it a name that actually tells you what it's for and what it does. Don't just call it uh, Dave's Awesome Style, Cheryl's Way Cool Style, or Neato Text. What does that mean? It doesn't mean anything. Imagine if you're working on a project, you go out for lunch, you get hit by a bus, and well, that's it, you're dead. Someone has to come in and take over your work. They come in and they see Cheryl's awesome style. Does anyone have an idea what Cheryl did with this style? What does it look like? What is it supposed to do? What's it for? No, you've left behind a mess. What you need to do is make sure that, that again, that style needs to have a name that tells you what it's for, what it does. In this case, we're going to call it reference list entry. Style type. There are a couple of different ones here, but the things we're going to think about most are char character and paragraph styles. Paragraph styles apply to entire paragraphs at once. You click somewhere in a paragraph, notice these little paragraph symbols over here, that means those are paragraph styles. Click there, boom, it applies to the entire paragraph. You've got character style on the other hand. What does a character style do? Character styles got these little letters, like the A's. Character styles will apply to individual letters or words, whatever you highlight. You can nest character styles inside paragraph styles, but you cannot nest a paragraph style within a paragraph style. Fair enough. Let's move on. We're going to leave this one as a paragraph style because every time we hit enter, we want it to be its own whole thing identified. Style based on, we're going to base it on normal. That's what it's going to look like, its basis. Style for following paragraph. Each time we hit enter, what do we want to come next? What kind of style? In this case, because I'm going to be typing, typing enter, uh, reference list entries and just pressing enter and creating a new one, I'm just going to have the same thing each time. So we'll leave it as it is. We aren't going to have the main body look any different, but we are going to change something. We are going to use a different indentation. We're going to use a hanging indent. So the front line is always out to the margin. Second line is indented. I can adjust it however much I want, but I'm just going to leave it at half an inch because that's the standard. I say OK. I say OK. Notice what happened here. 
reference list entry, click. I can do it all at once. Boom, there you have it. I can go then to reference list entry and say select all four instances. It's selected every single one. So if you ever want to find where is the style being used, that's how you do it. Click on it, say select, and there you go. There's some other things you can do as well. For example, I'm going to shrink that down here. We're going to make this particular paragraph into a new style itself. We're going to create a block quotation. It's a paragraph style. It'll look like normal. We want it to go back to normal, though, because usually you don't have block quotation after block quotation after block quotation. We're going to format the paragraph. We're going to indent both sides because that's what we do with block formatting, or excuse me, block quotations. We say, OK, OK, bada bing, bada boom, there it is. There are a lot of other interesting things that you can do with styles, but these are the basics. One final note, when you're working with styles, sometimes you try to apply a style or remove a style, change one to the other, it just won't go. Sometimes what you have to do is result, resort to your nuclear option. So for example, if we have our options, we're going to say what's in use, OK. If, for example, this particular paragraph was at reference list entry, and you say, no, that's not what I want. I want it to be normal. And you click, 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 click on normal, and nothing happens. Go to clear all. Clear all will nuke whatever you have highlighted or whatever paragraph you're in, and send it back to normal style. That, again, is your nuclear option. It is very good for removing stubborn bits of formatting that just won't go away. So what have you learned? Thus far, you've learned how to apply a style. You have learned how to change style from one to another. You've learned how to modify styles. You've in particular learned how to change the fonts. You have learned how to change the font size. You can also change the text effects. You can also change the spacing above and below the paragraphs. And you can change the letting, that is the space between lines within a single paragraph. That'll be the end of this video.